Hi, Mandra Armstrong, and welcome to the back office Teardown Lab. As ever, I have bought a kit, but I cannot remember what it is. <laughs> uh, it doesn't say anything on the pack apart from made in China. Uh, it does appear to have some instructions, which is a little unusual. However, we're finding that to be more of the case often with these Chinese kits than some of those good quality ones, which expect you to go online and get the data sheet. So it does have a screen on it. There's your screen, your uh, LED seven segment displays, and we've got a microphone on it, which is magnetizing everything, and a resistor array, I think. Yes, it is the resistor array. Wow, okay, so what do we think it is, guys? Just from this. <laughs> yep, your guess is as good as mine. Does it say anything on the PCB? Nope. Although there's two buttons. Oh, yes, there is two buttons. Microphone. Gosh, it's a mystery kit. We'll f well, <laughs> you've got two options here now. We could assemble it and just see what happens, or we can look at the instructions. I think I can assemble it without the instructions, so let's do that. I'm going to put these aside. I promise you, I promise you I've not seen them. I don't know what this is. <laughs> Already off to a bad start. We need to make sure this goes in the right way. That's fine. We didn't need the instructions for that. But before we put that in, let's put all the resistors in. There's only one value of resistor, so we're super lucky with that at least. I'm going to use my resistor bender. Bite my shiny metal. Come on. They're always I always want to do so many of them at once. And there is a limit. I think four. Four is enough, so you just bend them across, that bends all the legs nicely. And you can hear I still have <coughs> a bit of a throg in my throat. 4.7k. That's strange. When I said frog in my throat, I pronounced it th. Did you notice that? My a, thro a throg in my throat. My liege. There is a throg in my throat. Get that in there. This is a, a fun kit though, isn't it? In terms of assembly at least. I think it's not very stressful. You can hardly get it wrong. You don't have two million different values of resistor. And of course, if you're designing kits, you don't want them to have two million values of resistor either because it must be an absolute nightmare to make sure you provided all the correct components. And that one wasn't bent so well. I think I did adequate bending on that. Right, we have a couple of diodes. I'm going to use the opportunity to fit those now. I'm not going to use the bend. I'm just going to use my fingers, which is it's acceptable. It was acceptable in the 80s before 3D printers. I'm going to get the other diode in. I wonder how many volts. It says DC 5 volts too, so we haven't got too much chance of blowing it up. Let's flip that over. So it's got a microphone. And it's got a screen. Is it some sort of visual VU meter? Come on, 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 come on. That would be my guess. That has to be my best guess, actually. Oh, why isn't it soldering? Eh, maybe it's a bit dirty. This might be a board that could benefit from a touch, a little touch, a kiss of flux. But are not going to get it. Not today, not ever. you just got that danger when there's a blob sometimes on the tip of the soldering iron that the blob is going to want to drift off and cause all manner of calamities. That's fine. We're all right. We're all right. I'm going to zoom back out. Let's chop those legs off and consider our next moves. There's a crystal on there too. I can just see that out of the corner of my wee eye. Crystal. And I've got one leg I forgot to solder. And one leg I soldered so much, it's basically when you cut it, it's like an elephant's foot. I'm going to show you that because sometimes that happens. And I, I'll show you what I do when that happens because if you look in here, that's what I would call an elephant's foot, where it's really flat. Go in there and just touch that up. On this board it's okay, but some boards where you have ground planes, 
I'm always a little bit worried that it's so close to the ground plane. Even the act of cutting it might have been enough to just flick off that solder resist and, and bridge it. So what's our next comp the next move? I'd say the next move is going to be putting the transistor and these ouch, get out of my capacitors in. So the transistor is nice and easy. I like how they've got a very square looking vector print on there. I wonder what bit of CAD they used. Something something ancient. Uh, we have here, it looks like a 40 picofarads. 104. Oh, hang on a minute. Mm -mm -mm. These would be 30s. Let's get those in first and then we'll find the 104. Yeah, I can see it. I can see the 104 just there next to it. I think that's probably a good point to flip it because they're all going to want to fall out. Now for these I'm doing the just tack leg trick, just do the one old leg. Transistor's okay, that's not going to go anywhere, so just get the transistor in fully. And let's turn it over. Just 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 the one could do with a bit of reseating, so I'm gonna just reseat that. They look good, let's finish those off. Ah, uh, it's jiggling, it's jiggling all over the place. Someone said I, my hands were very unsteady in a video. I don't know. It looked alright to me, but maybe. You know, maybe getting that with age. I think it's okay. I'm not seeing any nerve damage just yet. They get stressed out sometimes. They get stressed out, especially if you're working... They, they say I'm working haphazardly, you know, on something. It's fine. Right. I like to do things in order of the height. So I think we're going to go for the LCD display. Or rather, LED display. I'm not even sure LCD displays are still a thing. So many other technologies like OLED. And isn't that ironic? We're back round to LEDs again. Come on. This is a lot harder than it bloody should be. There we go. Nice job. Now remember there's a dot when you have a, a resistor array and there's the dot and that lines up with the line on the board which you can just about see. I think I could just about get away, not really. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna have to do a, a little thumb trick. The, the ancient thumb trick here. Gonna, ugh, that's filthy. Right, ready? Let's see if we can attack something. Boom, we got it. We got it, and it's stuck there now. It's a good old, good old trick, that. Handy. Especially if you don't have any helping hands on hand. Oh, we're belting through it, look at that. Imagine we made this and the instructions had an errata in it and it said whatever you do don't use the values on the silk screen because they've they got to go in different places now. Okay, we're good. So you'll have your screen in, you got your resistors in. I think we should get the IC in before it goes bad. Right, so it's uh, STC 12C45, 4052 rather. I think that's a pick, I'd say pick 12 probably. Or could it be a pick 16, but more a pick 12? Anyway, it's a copy, it's a microcontroller of some description. Let's get all these little pins in the, the holes. Like that, just like that. Where happened to Tommy Cooper? 12 megahertz. Whew. Some power. This has got some power, this thing. It's like a cray super computer. It's probably listening to the sound and doing some fast Fourier computations on it. And then following that up with some wavelet transforms. Look at that, look at that, look at that. He's on a roll and being impeded by our, our crystal legs. 
He doesn't let it stop him. Nope, he just keeps going. He's bulldozer in it. That's what they should call me. The PCB bulldozer. Let's get going with it. Look at that. It's a shame uh, through hole is such a drag in terms of preparing the components. Otherwise, it is the it is the funnest soldering. I have to admit. But you've got to weigh that against the time it takes to prepare everything. And although it doesn't look like it's taken that long for me, well, because it hasn't. Oh, God. Now, these switches. Let's be careful. Now, remember, they're not quite square. They all only go in one way, so you should be okay. Um, but, yeah, as I was saying, if you've got... A, oh, no. If you've got, like, a million boards to make, and then you have to bend all the little legs out it will start to grate whereas surface mount you're just plopping them on aren't you I mean it's that's tedious in its own way because it's very tiny and you have to sit there moving each thing around by hand making sure they're the right way round capacitors are alright it's the resistors you always want them the right way round to look pretty that takes it the, I think overall, I don't know, overall it probably takes longer to surface mount. It just feels less horrible somehow. It's all horrible. Let robots do it. You don't care if it's a kit though, do you? It's just one off. Okay, let's get the microphone ready. It's saying this side is the plus. Don't lose it. Get, get, get. I'm not going to wash the board, so I don't need the seal. Oh, 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 those pins. Oh, my word. That's not quite the right footprint, was it? that be okay. All right, all right, everything is going to be all right. So, 10 microfarad. Uh, this is an, a hundred. Uh, that away. Make sure you get the polarity correct. And then this should be a 10. Yes. Yes. Come to the dark side. Gosh, what's it going to do? What could this fantankerous creation do? It's very exciting. Feel it's it's going to blow us away, whatever it is. And hopefully not in the literal sense. So I wonder how many of you boys and girls are going to go out and buy this kit on Amazon. You'll have to Google it. I might I might look it up for you. Check out the uh, links below just in case I uh, bothered. Oh, there is a couple more solder points on this board, isn't there? I wonder what they are. You can see them there, right at the bottom. <clears throat> three volts. So there's three volts there and DC five volts there. So I wonder if that's just an alternative power supply or if that is the another interface that we have to, to use and figure out what this is. Perhaps it's a... a a screen, an interface that will tell you when you've got three volts on it. Okay, I'm getting my wires. It's a bit off camera. If you hear noises, that's me getting these wires. You can see I strategically have one shorter than the other to both annoy me, but it's better because it doesn't short out. So I'm just going to pop those in. I can find the appropriate screwdriver. An, an appropriate screwdriver, so plusative here. Plus, plusative, that's that's more correct. Oh, crikey. Sorry about the cut, I just couldn't get that off with uh, without the screwdriver handle and I couldn't find the screwdriver handle. But we're there now, so I'm just adjusting the voltage on the voltmeter. It's at five volts and I'm about to plug in the wire, so let's see what happens. Three, two, one go. Um, 
Okay, that's fine because I've, I've actually got to activate the on switch. Ooh. I'm seeing a 12. <clears throat> Hello? Oh, that's not a microphone, that's a speaker. It says bell on it. Okay. Is it a clock? It's a clock, isn't it? I can hear it whining away there. It's making a, a crazy whining sound. Let's have a look at the instructions. My guess is it's an alarm clock. So, <laughs> default clock display 12. Middle two o'clock is not blinking. Clock state S1. Uh, uh. Oh my gosh, look how much instructions you need. <laughs> to use this clock but yes indeed it is a clock and it's running off that 12 megahertz crystal I know a lot of you are fans of these kind of kits but I have to tell you I've been going through these instructions and they are proper proper mental um, <laughs> as far as I can ascertain this does have multiple functions so it has a clock function it has an alarm clock function, it has a countdown function, it has a stopwatch function, it has a counter function, and I don't even know, there's like a couple of extra things here. Um, whole point prompt settings, whatever that is. I think that's really between um, 24 hours and 12 hour formats. And then this is a, a clock speed adjust, so you can actually calibrate the clock. There's a lot of clock action going in on something that's got some pretty terrible <laughs> instructions for setting how to do so. But if you are a clock aficionado, you probably would be able to use that. Um, it generally seems to consist of pressing this S2 button to go through the modes and then deciphering the various flashings on the screen. So this one would be the alarm clock mode. This one, I'm guessing, is the countdown function. Let's see, can we set time? Yeah, in fact we can. It would be neat actually, look, that's the countdown function. It would be neat if we can go back in there and just set it to one second. Um, but as you saw there, it went a bit crazy. Oh, that's setting the time. That's setting the seconds. Right, let's go back again. Alarm, countdown, don't change. Right, let's get in there again. We want that to be zero, we want that to be zero. We want that to be one. Right, now, if, if I keep you busy for some time, we might be able to hear this going off. <clears throat> Some of you may well have a 3D printer and I suspect you could put this in quite a nice enclosure really and make your own little desk clock. If you're going to do that, I would suggest that you try to rig up some sort of battery because it's going to lose its settings as soon as it loses the power to the um, clock PCB here. When, uh, when you do power it down and power it back up, there's no notion at all of it resuming. So there's definitely, it's gone once you've done that. Oh, I should have pressed this to start the... Oh. <laughs> there you go. I think we've been through the whole spectrum of functionality on this now, so... What do you think? Are you going to have a go at making this clock? Or are you uh, going to give this one a miss? I don't think it's uh, particularly practical this day and age when everything's got a clock on it, but maybe you might learn something from assembling it. Please like, share, subscribe. If you fancy buying me a coffee, uh, consider some Patreon action. Links down below. And as ever, thank you for watching.